Hello AP STAT students, Mr. Hazelhorst here with your Chapter 8 Section 1B video. Again, reminders down below, you know what it takes to be successful, uh, so let's put those things into practice. Let's just jump right in to what we're going to do today. Uh, today we're going to talk about the normal approximation of a binomial distribution. So the first video covered what a binomial distribution is, how we can use a binomial distribution formula to make some calculations. And what we're going to look at today is how does that fit to a normal distribution? So to begin this video, I want to look at a couple of graphs, all right? So I want you to think about what you notice about these graphs of a binomial distribution, all right? So the graph that I have in the top left here, um, you know, that's if you flip a coin 10 times, that's the distribution of outcomes, right? So we're going to get anywhere from 0 to 10. Uh, heads and we can see the probabilities of those occurring the highest right in the middle at five all right uh, so we take a look all right think about um, what does that kind of look like we've kind of seen that shape before right so if i flip a coin 20 times same idea flipping a coin 50 times same idea well i hope what you notice is that all of those graphs you know we would say well, first off they're symmetric right they're unimodal all right they're the high point their peak is at what their center would be, the mean, all right, right in the middle. And, you know, they kind of look like a normal distribution, okay? So this is a great example that illustrates, yeah, a binomial setting uh, really can follow a normal distribution. And if it follows a normal distribution, then, you know, we can apply that. And that's what we're going to look at today, all right? Now, what I do need to point out is it perfectly binomial. Well, hopefully you'd say no, right? You know, like even take this 50 coin graph as an example, right? It's kind of chunky, right? If I drew some graphs on here, there's some chunks where you know, that just doesn't fit the normal graph perfectly. The normal distribution is a smooth curve, and here this is very boxy, right? Kind of looks like a normal distribution drawn in Minecraft, but you know that's the idea here, okay? It's an approximation; it's not an exact value, okay? So. If I want to use a normal distribution to approximate a binomial distribution, the first thing I need to understand is not all situations can be modeled with a normal distribution. All right? And there's some rules of thumb that have to be met in order for the, the approximation to be accurate. All right? So rule of thumb number one is that n times p, so n again representing our number of trials, p representing the probability of success. So n times p needs to be greater than or equal to 10. And n times 1 minus p also needs to be greater than or equal to 10. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time focused on these rules right now because we're actually going to come back to this second semester and we'll talk in more detail why those rule of thumbs have to be met. So if you really have some questions on why do we have to worry about these rules of thumb, I'm just going to encourage you to hold those off till we get to some later chapters and it will all start to make sense then. For right now, I'm just going to ask you to trust me and I know that's a lot to ask. Um, I'm not always the most trustworthy person, but I'm going to ask that anyway, okay? So, um, think about what you need for a normal distribution. Well, we need a mean and a standard deviation, okay? Well, I want to go back to my coin problem for a moment. If I asked you to flip a coin 10 times, and then I asked you, well, what do you think the average number of heads would be? I'm going to guess most of you would say five, right? And the same thing, if I said, okay, I'm going to flip that coin 20 times, and what do you think the average number of heads I obtain is? I'm going to guess most of you would say 10. And if I said, okay, I'm going to flip that coin 50 times, and I want you to tell me on average how many heads you think you'd come up with, you'd probably say 25, right? Now, where did you come up with that value? Well, you took the number of trials, how many times I was going to flip a coin, and you multiplied it by the probability of getting a head. All right, and that's our rule, all right? If we want to find the mean of a normal distribution in a binomial setting, it's really that simple, okay? So the mean is just simply taking n times p, all right? Again, if you were taking a 20-question true-false quiz and you guessed on every single question, and we do that with the entire class, how many questions do you think the class would get, uh, would you expect the class to get correct? Most of you would probably say 10, all right? It is really as simple as taking n times p. All right, the standard deviation is a little bit more detail. The standard deviation uh, is going to come from taking n times p. So notice the mean is a part of this formula, then times 1 minus p. And both of these formulas are listed in your gold packet. So again, they're not something that you need to memorize. We just need to know how to use them and apply them. All right, so 
Uh, if we apply those formulas here, all right, again, you're taking a 20 question true false quiz. Guess on every question. How many would you expect to be correct? Well, if we apply the formula, we just simply, okay, I got 20 questions. The probability I guess it correct is one half. So we're going to expect to get about 10 questions correct. And that would be our probability, okay? Uh, standard deviation. Uh, if we said, okay, what is the standard deviation of this distribution? Well, again, we just apply the formula. So we'd say our standard deviation is going to be equal to the square root of n times p. Well, I already did that work up here, right? So I'm just going to carry this 10 down and then minus times 1 minus 1 half. So we just end up with the square root of 10 minus times 1 minus 1 half. So we end up with the square root of 5, and that would be our standard deviation. We calculate that out, get a decimal approximation, and we really have all the information that we need to work with a normal distribution. That's all the values we need, a mean and a standard deviation. Okay? So what I want to do next here is I want to look at some settings. Um, well, first let's do this. Why do I need to know this? Okay. Well, we're, I want to start to begin to establish that the normal distribution can be used to model different distributions of data. Okay. We talk a lot about the normal distribution already this semester, whether it was back in Chapter 2 or even in the beginnings of Chapter 7. Um, you know, and we want to begin to understand how that fits to a lot of different settings. Because you're going to see when we move into statistical inference second semester that we use the normal distribution to do a lot. And so we want to know that the normal distribution is effective in modeling things. So that's a connection that we're trying to establish here. Because the reality of it is we really don't need to do a normal distribution in these problems. Uh, we can just do a binomial distribution. We have that built into our calculator. Uh, but again, it's this connection that we want to start to establish. All right. And if we can make this connection now, that's going to make our life a lot easier in future chapters. Okay. So as we go through this lesson, I know you're going to have the thoughts of why do I need to do this? Again, second time I'm going to say this, Dave, but I'm just going to ask you to trust me on this. Okay. So here's an example. All right. Let's say we want to flip a coin 100 times. And we were going to ask, uh, what is the probability that the results contain at least 40 heads? Okay. We already know that we could apply this on a binomial distribution. So let's actually do that, right? Let's do this in a binomial setting, right? Good review of the first video, okay? Well, we see that phrase, at least 40. So remember we said in the last video, right? CDF is set up for at most. Here I have an at least. So I'm going to have to do 1 minus the binomial CDF. My number of trials is 100. My probability of success is one half, right? That's what we're going to flip ahead. And then I would need to subtract out 39 and below. So I'm going to plug a 39 in here, right? So if we apply a binomial setting in this problem, let me pull my graphing calculator out. So we'll go one minus the binomial distribution. So let's select letter B again here. Slowly but surely it's getting there. All right. And I'm going to change my number of trials to 100. Probability of success is 0.5. My X value is going to be 39 in this problem. We hit paste, enter. All right, and there's our probability. So 0.9824, let's say. Okay. Now, what I want to do next is I want to verify how the normal distribution could be used to approximate that value. So let's say we didn't treat this as binomial, but we treated it as following a normal distribution. Because again, if we go to the previous slide that we started this lesson with, we can see that that graph is approaching. Okay. Well, what do we need to use a normal distribution? All right. Well, again, we need the mean and we need the standard deviation. All right, so we set up the formula to find those. All right, mean uh, number of trials, which is 100, times probability of success. So we know on average there would be 50 heads obtained. So there's our mean. Standard deviation is going to come from the square root of n times p, which we just did that work. That's 50, right, times 1 minus p. So 1 half again. Right, so we end up with a square root of 25, which would give us a standard deviation of 5. Right? And then I could draw this out in a normal setting. Right? Mean in the middle is 50. 
We want to find the probability of at least 40 heads. So we'd be shading in this direction. And I could set up a normal CDF, right? So we go normal CDF. Our lower bound is 40. Upper bound would be 1E99. Mean is 50. Standard deviation is 5. All right, so if we go into our distribution menu, normal CDF, our lower bound, again, we're going to plug in 40, upper bound, 1E99, mean of 50, standard deviation of 5, paste that in, and there's our approximation. Now, compare this number with what we got out of the binomial CDF, okay? Notice it's not exactly the same. All right, and, never, and we didn't say that it would be in the beginning, but we said that it would be a good approximation. Okay? And you'll notice that, yes, it is a good approximation. We're only about you know, a half of a percent off. That's pretty darn solid. Okay? So again, it's not perfect, but it does work great. Now, this used to be a lot more important before people had calculators handy uh, to use on a problem like a binomial um, distribution problem. Um, but with the advent of calculators, again, you know, we're just going to do the binomial CDF and we're going to get the exact value. But again, remember the point of this chapter is not about just doing something to do it. It's about establishing a connection with a normal distribution so that we can build off that in future chapters. Okay? Now, let's do one more example here. All right, you're planning a survey of small businesses in your area and you choose a simple random sample of 30 businesses. Experience shows that three-fourths of the businesses you contact will respond. So what is the probability that more than 20 will respond? Okay. Well, again, this follows a binomial setting. Right? If we think about it, there's two outcomes. Um, we either have contact or, or we have a response or we don't. Uh, we have a fixed number of trials, and we're going to assume we've chosen these um, businesses at random. So we have independent events. Okay. So if we set this up in a binomial setting, all right, Again, we've got that phrase more than. Well, that doesn't match up to at most. So this is an at least setting, right? More than 20 would be the same as saying at least 20. So again, I'm going to have to go 1 minus the binomial CDF um, My number of trials here would be 30. Probability that they respond is 0.75. And we would be subtracting out 19 and below. Okay? So if I plug this into my calculator. Now I'm going to cheat here a little bit and uh, slide this over. So I'm going to hit second and then enter and second enter again so that I don't have to retype in and go to my distribution menu. So I'm just going to go back and now I can edit these numbers. So we're going to change that to 30. Ooh. Try this again here. There we go. So again, let's go back here. The calculator's not responding well. There we go. So I'm going to go 30, comma, 0.75, comma, and then 19. And we'll hit enter. All right. So this time, uh, our binomial finds a probability of 0.8943 when I round here. Okay, so now let's do this in a normal setting and let's see how this approximation played out. Okay, so I'm going to slide this over. So if we go to the normal distribution side now, again, I need a mean and I need a standard deviation. So the mean, again, would be equal to my number of trials, which is 30 times 0.75, which would give us 22.5. Our standard deviation would then be the square root of n times p, which again is 22 and a half, just found that, times 1 minus p, which would be 0.25. All right, so let's throw that into the calculator here real quick. Um, so we're going to go to the square root. Maybe. There we go. 22.5 uh, times 0.25. All right, so we get a standard deviation, and I'm going to round this to the hundredth here of 2.37. Okay, so if I draw this out in normal distribution, mean in the middle of 22.5, I'm going to find the probability of at least 20 businesses, right, shade above. So let's set this up in our normal CDF. 
So if I go to my distribution menu, my lower bound in this problem is 20. My upper bound is going to stay infinity. My mean this time is 22.5. My standard deviation is 2.37. And let's paste that in, hit enter, and hit enter again. So now our probability in the approximation is 0.8543. Okay? Now, what I want to point out with this example is remember on our last slide how close our approximation was. Our approximation was within a, I mean, a half a percent. That was pretty awesome. But this approximation is off by 4%. And you might not think that's that big of a deal, but let me just ask you do you want your grade to be off by 4%? Probably not, okay? So 4% is a little bit big on the margin of error side. So what's wrong with this problem? How come it didn't approximate things well? Well, what I didn't check purposefully on the last problem is I didn't check the conditions. Remember we said there's these rules of thumbs that have to be met. We said n times p and n times 1 minus p both have to be greater than or equal to 10. In the last problem, that condition was met, okay? n times p and n times 1 minus p would both be 50, and you can go back and check if you want. But in this problem, the condition's not met. All right, n times p, which ironically is the same thing as our mean, well, that value was met, okay? But there's two parts to the rule of thumb, all right? If I take n, which is 30, times 1 minus p, which would be 0.25, all right, this comes out to be 7.5. And so what we have in this setting is we have a situation where the rules of thumb aren't met. And that means that the normal distribution would not be an appropriate approximation to the binomial distribution. And that goes back to what we said earlier in the video. All right? It can, at times, be a great approximation of the binomial distribution. But not all distributions can be modeled with a normal. And this would be an example of one that's not. Now, what could we do to make this model a normal distribution? Right, well, there's something that we have control over. So if I need to get this number over 10, I can't change the probability, but I can change the sample size. I could go out and select more data. And as I collect more data, this number is going to move up. So as I collect more data, then it starts to follow more of a normal distribution. And that's going to be a concept that we talk about in more detail later on in this class. But something to keep in mind now. All right. Well, that's the end of our Chapter 8, Section 1B video. I hope you guys are having a great day. As always, complete the form below. Uh, leave me any notes of any things that you have questions on. And I look forward to, to getting back in the classroom with you guys soon. Everybody have a great day.